So if you're enjoying the series so far and you do have an ad blocker turned on, it'd be really appreciated if you could turn it off. The ads run on the videos are our primary form of revenue. So now onto the CPU. So what does the CPU do in the computer? It essentially provides the computing power for program execution on the computer and to control the hardware interfaces on the computer as well. The Intel one provided has the user manual and the CPU itself. And the AMD one here has the user manual, the CPU itself, and a heatsink. Now, generally in the more overclockable CPUs, such as the Intel K series, a CPU cooler isn't supplied and you usually have to purchase an aftermarket cooler. This is also true with some of the higher end AMD Ryzen processors. Uh, just check this before you make your final order. CPU ranges will have a specific socket or connection type, such as Intel's socket 1151 or AMD's socket AM4. These CPUs are also only compatible with their compatible manufacturer chipsets on the motherboard. These are paired to the CPU and the socket type. These motherboard chipsets are generally released and phased out at the same time as the CPU to ensure support across various ranges. Now like motherboards, there's varying different types of CPUs for the purpose required. Generally, the biggest change is their overall output speed. The several main influences are the processor frequency, which roughly translates to the overall speed, the number of cores, which was previously generally four, now it's six to eight in higher end gaming CPUs, the number of threads per core, multiple threads allow for parallel execution on each CPU core, Lower end CPUs don't generally have this functionality. Uh, the ability to increase speed or overclock and other items like the amount of cache available to each CPU core. So each of these influence how fast your CPU is going to be in your computer. But you need to consider when building the computer, what do you need the CPU for? Do you need a high powered CPU for a gaming computer or do you need a lower powered one for perhaps an office PC? If you're after a lot more detail on how CPUs operate, you can actually download from our Easy PC Builder website, the master course, which explains in much more detail the operation of CPUs. So when building and choosing a CPU, look at your budget and try to find a happy medium between the cost between your CPU, your RAM, and your graphics card for best performance. Generally, for a gaming PC, your graphics card will cost twice your CPU cost. This combination will provide both a strong CPU and GPU for your purpose, as they both have differing complex roles. RAM of 4 to 8 gig in a gaming PC is usually acceptable. Some processors have integrated graphics on the CPU, so you don't always need a standalone graphics card. This is very useful for office computers which don't undertake overly complex graphics work, or if you're building a PC and waiting for your high-end graphics card. So in the gaming computer world, having the highest spec or the most expensive CPU in the computer doesn't always translate to the best graphics. Uh, have a look at our section on video cards as to why this is so. So if you'd like to learn more, jump over to our website at easypcbuilder.com where you can download our monthly updated build guides for gaming PCs of various levels, office PCs and media PCs, and you can also download our Easy PC Builder Master Course. Thanks for watching.